I would like to imagine you at the edge of your seat waiting for this episode to drop. I had technical difficulties that prohibited me from uploading this video, but that issue has been resolved and it is behind us. Welcome to Strike Stroke. My name is Dr. Mekdas. Let us continue our talk on the National Institute of Health Stroke Scale, shortly known as the NIH Stroke Scale. The NIH Stroke Scale is a standardized tool used to help quantify the severity of a stroke an individual is having and help guide in treatment. Today we're going to look at the seventh component of the NIH Stroke Scale called limb ataxia. This section is looking for a stroke involving the cerebellum. The cerebellum, also known as the little brain, sits perfectly underneath the cerebral hemispheres and behind the brain stem. This location allows the cerebellum to make connection with the cerebral hemispheres, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. The cerebellum is constantly working, listening, and helping us maintain balance, posture, muscle tone, and coordinate motor action that is smooth and on target. It makes our movement look effortless. The cerebellum is very important. Well, actually, the entire nervous system is very important. But the cerebellum allows us to use our muscle strength effectively. If you can just imagine a scenario where the cerebral cortex is working fine, the basal ganglia, they're working fine, but the cerebellum is injured. So you're missing the connection between the cerebral hemispheres and the cerebellum. In this scenario, because the cortical spinal tract is intact, you would have motor strength that is intact. But that motor strength to be able to be used effectively need to be coordinated, smooth, and on target. And that's where the cerebellum comes to play. This section is scored on the scale of zero to two. Zero is given to an individual who has no ataxia. One is given to an individual who has ataxia involving one limb, either the arm or leg. Two will be given to an individual who has ataxia involving two limbs. How is limb ataxia tested in stroke code? Limb ataxia is tested using maneuvers such as finger to nose and heel to shin. On finger to nose testing, we're looking for a coordination or ataxia involving the arms. When we're testing finger to nose, this section requires that the individual eyes remain open. The reason is because one, they need to look at the end target they're reaching for, and two, we're looking for cerebellar ataxia. When an individual is asked to perform tasks with their eyes closed, then we're looking for sensory ataxia. And sensory ataxia is not tested in a stroke code, but we can talk about sensory ataxia in the future. How is finger to nose tested during a stroke code? The examiner will ask the individual involved in a stroke code to make a pointer as such with their index finger, then they'll ask them to touch their nose and then another endpoint such as the instructor's finger, hence the name finger to nose, and ask them to go back and forth and ataxia is seen when the individual extends their hand trying to reach the examiner's finger. The ataxia can be as subtle as finger ataxia or it can be as severe as limb ataxia. When the limb is picked up against gravity because of loss of tone in that limb, we can see the arm itself is ataxic. If eyes need to be open, then how do you test ataxia in an individual who is legally blind? In this case, we will ask the individual to test their nose from an outstretched position and we assess for ataxia as the finger comes closer to the nose. The heel tissue maneuver is looking for ataxia or incoordination involving the legs. How is heel tissue performed during a stroke code? It is difficult for me to show you this heel tissue maneuver in this position, but we can pretend that my right fist is my right heel and that this portion of my arm is my left shin. So in this case, if we're testing the right leg, we can ask the individual to take the right heel and move it up and down the left shin. And we're looking to see if the movement is coordinated and smooth. And if the movement sways as such, then we will say that the limb has ataxia. This is not part of the stroke code, but it is important that when we're testing for ataxia, to make sure that the ataxia is present out of proportion to weakness. This is important because sometimes when the limb is weak, when you're asking it to move against gravity, it could look like the limb is ataxic, but truly the limb is just weak and it cannot hold itself up against gravity. Where does ataxia localize in the brain? For the most part, ataxia localizes to the cerebellum. 
but ataxia can also occur in stroke involving the corner radiata, internal capsule, thalamus, and pons. In the lacuna stroke syndrome called ataxic hemiparesis, we see weakness involving the limb because the cortical spinal tract is affected, as well as ataxia in the limb because the connection of these cortical spinal tract to the cerebellum is disrupted. Why do we see ataxia on the same side of the lesion? From what we know, brain control is contralateral or opposite, meaning the left cerebral hemisphere controls the right part of the body and the right cerebral hemisphere controls the left part of the body. Then why is it when it comes to the cerebellum that if the right cerebellum is injured, we have incoordination involving the right part of the body. Actually, the cerebellum follows the same rule. Let's take the right cerebellum for example. The right cerebellum actually talks to the left cerebral hemisphere. It sends information and it receives information from the left part of the brain. So when the left part of the brain says, I want to do this, the cerebellum makes that task look effortless. And we know that the left part of the brain controls the right part of the body. So indirectly, we can see that the right cerebellum is actually under the control of the left hemisphere or that it controls the movement of the left hemisphere, which controls the right part of the body. So the control remains contralateral, but the lesion will be ipsilateral. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information useful. Always remember to dial 911 if you or someone near you suddenly can't see, see can't, can't, can't speak, speak, can't walk, or can't feel. Let the operator know that you or someone near you might be having a stroke so that you or the individual near you can be transported to the nearby comprehensive or primary stroke center for rapid stroke analysis and tailored treatment.